Hi, this is Tom Blodgett from Genda Industries, and today we're going to use the Genda Industries Guided Sharpener, or the Jigs for Knives, to sharpen a Maestro G4 fish cleaver. Okay, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to clamp the blade. So, uh, the best way to do this is this has such a large curve to it. We could try to put it in straight. Uh, we can see it's definitely not like a centered knife like it would be on a normal uh, Western style chef or something or even a pocket knife. So uh, we have several uh, clamping options here. We can find the line between the curve and the belly and set it straight like this. So we'd have to put the clamps closer together so we can get a, a more like this kind of angle to it. Or we could just kind of put it in straight and follow the contour. Um, I'm personally of the mind of, of following that line. So what I'm gonna do is mark it with a Sharpie to sort of line up where we wanna be. To, to get the kind of straight line that we wanna do, we're gonna draw a line from the tip to the heel. So that's our straight line from heel to tip. And you can see how the belly comes out uh, here. So what we're gonna do is line the knife up as best we can this way, so that this line is parallel to the, or perpendicular in this case, to the uh, clamps. So you can see what we're gonna have to do here in order to do that. We're out of space here. If we try to clamp it like regular, the way the clamps are right now, that line's way off. All right, so what we're gonna do here is move things around a little bit. We're gonna to go to one side. So we're gonna clamp this. We're gonna move this over to the one side, or in this case, the left. So again, we loosen up the screws here, the, the, the dumbbells, so that they can move. And we're gonna pop it on one side here so that because of the, the shape of the blade, we're able to kind of grab it over here and manipulate it to be perpendicular. And that looks about right. So there, we just clamp it down. Use the tool, get it into the clamp. You don't have to wrench. Just a little tight is usually enough. If you start here and clicking and stuff, then you're over tightening. So and that's it, just snug. Anything tighter than that, you risk out stripping things. So that's a little too tight right there. You heard that little squeak. So this isn't good. Okay, we're good to go. That's now mounted and ready for the next stage, which is going to be setting our angle. So in setting our angle, first thing we want to do is mark the edge. So we're going to take the Sharpie here. I like to just jab it in so it just splits it. You go through markers this way, but creates a black line evenly on both sides. So we're just outlining that with a Sharpie. Go slow and careful, don't kill yourself. So we're gonna set our angle. We're gonna take the angle cube, turn it on. So to zero out the, the angle, we're gonna start here. You gotta put it on the crossbar here, carefully, and then hit zero. Might take a couple times just because you're moving around. There you go, zero. Okay, now we're zeroed out. So this is our zero angle. So when we go and we measure with our stone holder, we'll have that zero reference point and then it'll be relative to that from now on. So we're gonna take the stone holder, we're gonna pop the angle cube on. I like to put it in the same position. Uh, you can put it wherever you want on here. This is magnetic, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So I put it up against the uh, end there, the knob. So I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle here. I'm lining it up with this pillar here as my reference point, just kind of putting it straight. This way I'm always in the same position now when I go to adjust. So for this knife, because it's more commercial, I'm gonna go with a uh, 18 degrees. So I'm at 15.75. And what I'm gonna do is come back here with this knob. This is my macro adjust here. And then the, the Xacu drive is up here with the rollers here. So first, because I'm at 15.75, I'm gonna to try to just get it more in the ballpark. I'll probably just hit 18 perfectly always. All right, so I got a point two to go. And it takes a few seconds to um, have the angle cube sometimes register the change. Uh, sometimes the changes are so minute, it just takes a little bit for it to kind of say, hey, something moved. We're just gonna go up, I gotta go up point two. So, I mean, it's as easy as this. I'm just using, whoop, too far. Having too much fun with it. 18.2, so just roll it back down. 18, okay. 18, oh, 7, 9, oh, this is going to do this today, isn't it? So now this is where we can really mac micro adjust. Again, it's going to take a few seconds to kind of get in there. 18, 
Okay, I'm good on that. Uh, so there. Now we can begin. Now this is with each stone, we'll have to adjust our height. Now this is a, a small di a diamond, which is thinner than our other stones. So right now we're just going to profile this at 18. So then we'll start sharpening. So we've got our 18 degrees and we're going to start checking to see if that's the right angle. So I, I use a little bit of water on my diamonds. So I'm going to hold the handle just because you don't want anything flipping out here. This is a big handle, a big blade. It's a lot of leverage going on here. So potentially, you know, just be careful. Uh, so what we're going to do just take a nice easy swipe. Okay, and I'm seeing already I'm hitting the very close to the edge. I'm very close. So now I'm just going to continue forward with some scrubbing strokes. So I've got a wide radius here. So I know I'm shaking a lot. The table's shaking here. Uh, this, the jigs is solid. Again, it's, it's a lot of knee shaking. So scrubbing strokes is just straight back and forth. It sounds worse than it is. You don't need a lot of weight. It's very quick to remove that ink, especially when you got the right angle. And I'm just going to go over evenly over the whole blade here. The scrubbing is just back and forth. Okay, I'm going to check for burr. Okay, so I'm getting a burr actually pretty fast over here. And I'm pulling up with my finger. I can even hear it. It's like a brr, brr, kind of feel against the ridges. I need a little bit more on, on this portion of the blade on the right hand side here. So. A little bit more, a little spritz of water. Okay, I'm getting a good burr here. I want a little bit more here in the middle. Again, the furthest point out is here. It's going to be the lowest angle. So, do a little bit more on the transition here. Feeling good about that. So what I do here is I usually just wipe the blade down carefully. I just pull away from the blade. Don't go swiping across. I just pull all that away. You know, the other side. And you can really feel that on the tissue on the underside there. So then we're gonna just flip it over. Simple as pie. So uh, we can remark the blade here if you want. I mean we're going by feel right now. But there's a little bit of marker that's not on there. So we'll just remark it. You don't need to at this point because you know you're hitting one angle on the other side. So you just got to go to you get a burr on the both sides. So the other side. So switch out the left hand if you want. You can still stay with the right hand. I'm going to switch hands because I just want to make sure the knife's not going anywhere. And you don't need a lot of pressure. Just let the, let the stone do the work here. Very well established burr. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is just gonna wipe it off again. I'm gonna flip it back over. Now I'm gonna start sweeping strokes because when I'm this is the first step is always the scrubbing, but what happens is sometimes the edge will get kind of wavy because you may spend more time in one area than the next. So what we want to do is make a nice even, and that will allow it to cut more straight and more fluidly. So from here, this is the harder part now. This is some technique again. What we're going to do is start, I'm going to do edge leading in this case because I'm going to go into the edge. Now you can do edge trailing as well. It's all up to you. Uh, but the, just keep it consistent. So I'm going to start my left side here. I'm going to come across and move into the blade. You really don't want to just be moving laterally. That's why I'm using more of the stone. And you can come back and just follow the same sweep. Up to you if you feel comfortable. If not, just do the one direction. So here. Again, edge trailing would be start here at the tip, all the way in, and then come back. Edge leading, edge trailing. At this stage, not a big deal because it's still rough diamonds. I'm just cleaning up that edge. Go carefully. You don't fall off. Right. And we know we have the angle, so I mean, yeah, I mean, it's totally like whatever. 
uh, sh very substantial burr. I'm just making sure that it's nice and even. And with the diamonds, it's super fast. Uh, so, okay. Flip that over. Come around here. Okay. So just get the, take a couple practice swings. And then come back in. And I'm just evening everything out. You don't want to run off the tip either. It's a little bit more advanced. You can run off the tip in the beginning, but you end up rounding it. So go slow so you get the technique down. And there's a lot of guys that are actually way better at this than I am. Yeah. So that's, you know, again, very quick to do that. Yeah, just making sure that it's a nice, even plane that it's not going to be wavy. All right, so this stone is done, and we're going to switch it out to the next grip. Uh, so when I'm switching stones, always go back to your original position that you checked uh, on the first time to get your angle. It's just more consistent. Uh, there are variations when you flip knives over from one side to the other through to the grind, through to the way the clamps go. Um, you know, we have the precision to adjust on either side. I personally only adjust on the one side and let it go. Some guys will adjust on every side and make the minute changes. You can with the Xacky drive. That's fine. It's all up to you. I personally just stick with the one angle on one side and go with that. Uh, so with that said, uh, the spring release here. So just pinball style. I'm going to pull two thumbs, you know, thumb and forefinger back here, uh, pointer, and just pull back. All right. Make sure you're hanging on to something though. And it fits inside the grooves here. So there's slots there for the stone. So pull it out, we're gonna switch it out. Uh, I'm gonna clean up with a 600 Chaucera, which is gonna come with your stones. So Chaucera 600, pop that in. He's like to use water. So now we have a thickness difference, plus this is a used stone, so there's gonna be always some differences. So first thing we need to do is get it to uh, 18 degrees, as we were before. I'm just gonna wet it a little bit, get it started. So. Okay, so again, I found my middle position on the pillar, popping that in. So I'm in the same position that I was, because if you start here or here, there's obviously a, a depth difference. Uh, so if we don't, if we started all at the tip, we'd be way in, and I'll show you that in a sec, actually. I'll show you what difference it would be. So I'm going to start here. Again, a consistent place is what you're shooting for. Uh, we might have to zero out the angle again, because this turns off automatically, so we'll do that, and then set the angle. Okay, again, setting the angle. Do it one more time for you. Here, zero it out. Good to go. Okay, there's usually one or two degrees difference with the stone, so we're at 16.65 right now. And we've got to get that up to 18. So I could use the macro adjust here, but before we do that, I want to show if I go to the other side here and I put it on this end, hopefully it won't fall off. It's at 18.35. And if I come down to the tip, that's uh, out of camera, it's 18.2. So, I mean, there's a two degree difference here, plus. So, again, 16.875. Again, it takes a couple seconds to adjust. All right, so we could use a macro. I'm going to use a little bit of a macro because I'm more than one degree off here. So, one and a quarter. So, I'm just going to pop it up as close as I feel comfortable with. A little bit more. The Xacky drive is good to about two or three degrees. So from here on in, I'll just use the Xacky drive because the stones are generally the same thickness. There's not such a big leap between the plate and the diamond plate and the uh, the Joceras. So, okay, 17.9, good. So just gotta come up. Boom, 18. Let's hope it stays. Again, I like to give it a few seconds to say, yeah, this is really 18. So we can now sharpen at 600. This is going to be much of the same stuff. I'll walk you through a little bit and then we'll just speed it up. Okay, so a little bit of water. See how it dried out already? All right, usually once these are, are properly soaked, uh, they just need spritzing to keep it alive. You don't want them too dry because then they get muddy and then nothing cuts. It gets too gummy. So just keep them wet, keep them viscous, and you're pretty good to go. Now we can start with scrubbing again. Again, the forward and backward strokes just to make sure we 
remove the diamond scratches, which are you know pretty substantial. It's a 600 grit stone, so it is very aggressive as well. So it's going to do a few um, scrubbing strokes, which is forward and backwards, and then I'll get to the sweeping. And then with each step, we'll do less scrubbing, more sweeping, because we want to maintain that evenness through a single stroke so that there's no waves to the edge. Okay, let's do it. Get a little bit of forming, a little bit more. So it's, right now, see the black iron on the stone. You want to make sure that, just, again, you don't want that too dry. It becomes too thick and it doesn't become effective as a sharpening stone anymore. Okay, we got a nice little burr going. And the burr here is a lot smaller than the diamond burr. So now we've got our gook here along the edge. So again, we're just gonna wipe it away from the edge. This way we're not scratching anything on the blade. We're not getting anything anywhere past the edge. And you can wipe the other side if you want as well. So you can also do the Sharpie trick on this second stage uh, to see if you're getting everything off. So we'll do that real quick here. I'll just. Give it a once over, keeping it real. Yep, all the sharp is gone. So from here we can switch straight over to sweeping. Again, get the get the practice swing. I'm going into the edge and then pulling back away. So I'm following the same path. Up to you how you want to do this. You want to do single strokes? You can. Some guys go. Uh, halfway and kind of meet it again. I like to go as long as I can with one stroke up to you. As long as it's sharp in the end. Good. Okay, we're going to flip it over to the other side. Alright, and here we're just going to again keep it alive. Some water. Camera here. Okay, I'm gonna start with some scrubbing strokes. Okay, good. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna come and switch to the sweeping strokes and just keep it a little bit from being too dry. Okay, again. Right, away, take my practice stroke. Okay, we're gonna switch it out to the 1K stone. Uh, more of the same. I'm going to go with the 1K Chaucera. I pre wetted this where it's dripping. So, put it in there. And then again, we're going to set our angle again. So, again, in the middle, the same position we can get. The angle cube, good. We're still on because we didn't waste so much time last time. And that, again, that difference. My 600 stone is more used than the 1,000, and the 1,000 wears at a different rate. So, they come around here. And again, so now I'm not going to use the macro, even though it's almost a half a degree. I'm at 17.6. But now I've got enough space where I'll, uh, about six or seven times. Whoop, too much. Okay. Boom. No, oh, no boom. <laughs> 17.95. So here is again where you can just turn like literally one to two cogs at a time and really dial that in. It's usually three or four, there it goes, about three cogs changes it to about 0.05, three to four cogs, depending on the day, the wind. So, let's see, there it is again. So it wants to go to 18, it's not sure, so we're going to do one or two more cogs here. Yeah, 
and we're good, I think. All right. Okay, so we've got our 18 degrees. We could mark the edge again, just to kind of make sure. Now, I'm pretty confident that we're going to hit it. So what I'm going to do here is just go sweeping and see what it does. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, the scrubbing because we really did do a lot of work on that. So here, I'm just going to take a nice stroke or two. Yeah, and it's going right away. Marker's going away. So we're hitting it. So I'm going to focus more on sweeping here. Okay, I'm going to mark the edge just because then you see how much smoother that edge is right now. It's just sharp. <laughs> so we're just going to 3K. We're just going to finish up again. Going to do more uh, sweeping. And yeah, mark sharper is gone. First stroke. So, and you can hear how smooth things are. Okay, for the ending, what we're going to do, because we did many strokes on either side, now we really do need to do that pyramid. We're going to start with, uh, I do like a 10, 7, 5, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 kind of thing. So, just to minimize any burr buildup, because as we're going over one side, the burr builds on the bottom side. So, you want to minimize that, and then fatigued edges and all that fun stuff. So, again, uh, so I'm going to do 10, just single here. I'm not going to go back and forth. Three. Continue on to higher grits after this. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. It's all the same, basically. Just keep going. Feel for that bird. Make sure you're hitting your angles. Uh, and at the end, do that little pyramid and come down to, to one stroke per side. I'm going to get some paper and cut that real quick. So I've got some paper. And just going to put it in and let it ride along the edge. So it's definitely doing what it needs to do. So we know when we take it out, it's going to do the same stuff. So let's take it out right now. Over. Okay. Maestro U G4. Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried about my hand. <laughs> yeah, even getting an S going. So yeah. Okay, gender jigs for knives and Maestro G4 fish cleaver. If you like that video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching and giving comments. And uh, hopefully you're learning something about how to sharpen and all the fun stuff around it. So uh, subscribe over here and I'll put some other videos up for you guys to watch and hopefully come back soon. Thanks a lot.